did not. <laughs> Chuck, you're you're her backup. Okay. So I think we're we're doing pretty good. Um, we're wide awake here. Uh, uh, Mary, are you going to stay with us? She's on Mary, mute. You're on mute. She's on mute. Uh, where's Regina today? Uh, she missed the board meeting too, so it must be something important. Okay. So, um, who, who's her buddy? Oh, Dodd's her buddy. My buddy's Chuck. Right. Uh, Ralph Dodd is her buddy. Your daughter's getting big, uh, Mary. Yeah. Getting tall. Yeah, you know, especially she has been doing class at home. Uh, yeah, she she's a, a big nice girl. Break when, when we have our meeting, she gets a break. <laughs> Why well, is her lunch break uh, from eleven forty-five to twelve fifteen? To twelve fifteen, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, Jackie, are you coming on or not? Because we are yeah, signing up. Yeah. Okay, Jackie's going to join us later. Married? We've got a few people to admit here. Um, yeah, Dave is coming, and um, Jackie's coming, and I've got to keep an eye on this. Uh, Waiting room. Okay, we, we can start sunset. now. Jackie's here. So, uh, Diane, let's get this show on the road. Who, who's the area code 404? Hey, that's 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 Meddy. Oh, oh Meddy's in Las Vegas. 404 is Atlanta. Are you still in Las? Okay. <laughs> Rotary Service of self. Okay, please stand. Put your hand over your heart and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jack, I think we got feedback. Oh, I turned it on. Okay. Oh, I didn't turn it on. Jackie, turn it on. Okay. And uh, shoot that dog. We're about to have a moment of silence. Did the dog hear that? He's still pledging allegiance. Yeah, he hear it. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. That's a pretty picture, by the way. We thank Diane for that. I'm glad you like it. Hi, Mark. Well, it looks like we're um, going to have a, a good meeting after all. Alan's here. We're up to about, um, I 19. guess, 19 people. 19. So that is great. Um, we're going to start the meeting with a sad note. Uh, Reggie Widgens called me yesterday and told me he lost his mother a few days ago. Oh, his, his mom was 92 years old and she was very healthy right up until, until the master decided that it was time for her to come join him. So um, I will get back to you with funeral arrangements uh, when uh, Reggie lets me know. He told me to get back to me in a day or two. So and we'll make a, a, a general announcement to the club, but um, pray for, um, for Reggie and his family. And we we're, we're hope, hope they are strong as, as we keep them in our, in our heart over the next few days. And Bill, I just wanted to let you know too that uh, 
just in the last hour got the word that my wife Senior's sister, her a younger sister, passed away this morning. Oh, oh we're sorry. That's up in Geneva, New York. So we just got that word. Tell Sini that he's been fighting that, cancer for thirty years. Oh boy. Cancer thirty years. She's in a better place, Alan. Yes, she is. She's a, she's a great lady. She's eighty-one. All right, I have a few announcements before we bring our speaker today, who is one of us. Bill Billings, uh, and I'm going to ask Bill Stram to formally announce Bill Billings when we ask him on, me, and you'll know why. Bill's our foundation chair, and uh, Bill Billings is um, a member of the district foundation, Rotary Foundation team. So, uh, Bill, you fair warning, Bill, you got a few minutes, but I know you're always ready to go. Uh, some quick announcements. I'll remind you again that the Exmoor Rotary Club this Saturday is selling barbecue in the Exmoor Town Park. But we also must acknowledge that the fire department, the volunteer fire department, is selling barbecue dinners this weekend as well, I believe. Uh, in both cases, you have to buy tickets in advance. So it's a, it's a matter of driving up to Exmoor or support, supporting your local fire department. Um, it's up to you. Well, get your flu case. shot, get your flu shot, and that's some of you need to get shingles shots as well. Um, Terry Flynn needs parking volunteers. Jim, are you still on for uh, parking on uh, election day? I'm available, I need a time and a location. And we'll get that to you. Paul, yep. are you on board? Yes. And Diane, if you don't decide today, we're going to forget about you. Actually, I, it's not being indecisive. I was waiting to get closer to see the weather. Oh, God. With the weather. Because if it's going to be cold and raining, unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to do okay, it. Okay. But, but you'll be there otherwise. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Stanley's not here, and I don't know what happened to the membership party. Bill Murphy, you were going to check in on that, um, the, the membership membership party. Yeah, yeah, it was actually the membership party itself was canceled. Um, the membership, the district membership chair couldn't make it, and so that part was canceled. But the uh, during the uh, area governor's monthly call with, with the district governor, that was discussed at great length. I wasn't able to sit in because I was across the bay doctor appointments, but Stan sat in for me on that meeting and uh, I haven't got the full download yet, but he was able to attend. He said he would tell me about it later, but generally speaking, uh, the district is looking to have some type of formal written uh, membership plan for each club for the coming year. Uh, you know, it's not set in stone. It's just, what are your goals? What do you want to achieve? what type of classification, how much gain, where are you? Just sort of a general look. So there'll be more about that coming out later, but the actual membership party was canceled for this month. Okay, well, thanks, Bill. Um, Paul has purchased, uh, uh, Paul, you have something to say? Well, I'll, I'll just continue that thought. That was one, I had several announcements actually. One is that I do have now in my possession, new rotary caps and t-shirts uh, uh the t-shirts were made at uh, the hello this is mary this is george signs hey um, michael put yourself on hey. mute. mary mute yourself <laughs> uh bill you can put her on mute yeah I'm, I'm, I'm muting her right now and uh so i have those in my truck so wherever i go they go um and uh, if you want to get your, if you're in a hurry to get yours, you just notify me and we'll figure it out. Uh, otherwise, I'll just be passing out our next highway cleanup. Um, and uh, those are just, those are for use at, uh, you know, our, um, uh, our, 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 so, our projects uh, uh, functions. Anyway, the, um, the, the other thing I wanted to uh, tell you that uh, uh, Joan Prescott, 
uh, Richard Leo's wife, uh, put in, and you probably noticed in the obituary, she put two possibilities for making donations in Richard's memory, uh, one of which was is our club. Um, and uh, we've, also, we've so far received $325 uh, in donations uh, in memory of Richard. Uh, and those were specifically to go, according to the obituary, to local projects that our club sponsors. Uh, but what I'm going to do with that money is is send it on to uh, to Rotary International as as contributions to Polio Plus and those specific people's names, uh, so that they will get. Uh, as well as a response from me thanking them for the donation, they will get a letter from Polio Plus, I mean, from Rhodey International saying that that's a tax deductible contribution that they made. But that money will go to Polio Plus in lieu of some of the money that our club has pledged to Polio Plus for the year so that we will have that much more money available in our club for local projects. Uh, so it sort of kills two birds with one stone. Um, and if you, if anybody wants to make a donation specifically in Richard's memory, uh, they can send that to me as at least one club member already has. Um, and uh, I, I will do that same thing for you. It'll go to Polio Plus in your name, but it'll make more money available uh, for local projects at the same time. Um, so those are my main announcements. Thank you, Paul. And I, that's really a smart thing to do so that those supporters get their tax deduction and it works out all, all around. Um, Bob, um, the t-shirts the and hats are, you know, uh, designed to uh, be very visible when we clean the highway. I'd like you to start thinking about uh, highway cleanup after the, the election. And okay. uh, if you would get up with uh, Libby on, on that, Dennis Libby, okay. Um, okay. we can, you know, start getting, and, th and that's another opportunity to get together and we can be socially distant, but we don't want to be doing it in the snow. So sometime between uh, <laughs> election day and, and Thanksgiving. Uh, okay. Dave, how are you? It's good to see you. Uh, we sent out a survey, uh, e-survey, last week about whether or not we're ready to go back to the coffee house. I've heard from about half the uh, membership, and we're kind of divided on that still. So um, we're going. I'm going to call everybody who hadn't responded, and it's an opportunity for me to say hi to them and see where they they sit. But I think the consensus is right now um, we'll err on the side of, of caution, but we just had a board member, a board meeting, and in the board meeting, we, uh, we said, we gotta do something. So it was decided, unless you guys say absolutely not, we're gonna have another Central Park outdoor socially safe meeting. Um, sometime after election day in November. We might have to wear our overcoats, but it's okay. <laughs> we'll be outside, we'll see each other. We can wave to one another, talk about what we've been doing and that sort of thing. Is anyone strongly against us getting together in Central Park again? And I'm curious, did you hear from anyone who's not been attending the Zoom meetings from the survey? Uh, one or two. Okay. One or two. But uh, it was mostly the regular Zoomers, <laughs> uh, yeah. which isn't surprising. And, we, you know, we don't want those who haven't been Zooming to stray too far away. So they're, they're going to get a call from a board member um, just to make sure that everything's okay with them. Because, you know, we all support one another and it's easy to uh, get in in the habit of not doing something 
something as well as doing something. So, oh, um, Bill, I, it's, yes. Oh, um, you know, I was watching the news uh, Monday night, and Dr. Anthony Fauci has warned us about these types of meetings. Okay, um, I mean, look, this this pandemic is getting worse. It's it's it, the um, uh, positivity rate in Northampton County is now at two and a half percent. It's not huge, but you know what? It's getting worse. Um, so, you know, I can't believe that we're actually talking about <clears throat> having a gathering in indoors or outdoors of our group when the uh, advice we're getting, uh, you know, from the top uh, doctor is avoid these meetings. Um, so I'm putting that out there because I'm taking that advice very seriously. So uh, I, 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 wanna, I want you guys to really look into that, please, and think about you know, uh, what you're doing here. Dave, you make a very good point. And I think that uh, each of us have to make individual judgments. And uh, I see it as an option. Uh, and um, if, if, if you want to partake in that option, fine. If you don't, we understand that. And uh, some of us have good reason to not take a chance. Uh, others are a little more like myself. I'm, you know, I've lived a long life. I, you know, if, if I check out tomorrow, it'll be okay. <laughs> well, if I could respond, um, the same doctor and many others have said wearing a mask and social socially distancing works. So if we wear a mask and socially distance, why would we all become infected if what the doctors are telling us is that works and you won't. And we have been staying indoors. We have been separated from people and we're locked down pretty much. And still people are getting infected. So there's a lot of confusion out there about what doctors are saying. Um, I'm, I'm careful. I do want to wear a mask and socially distance. And so far it's worked for me. But I'm telling you, I see nothing but confusion about what is being put out there is this works. And if you do this, you won't get it. Oh, but don't meet and don't go out even when you're wearing a mask and social distancing because it doesn't work. Uh, it's, it's total chaos out there right now. Yeah, um, and, and somebody was gonna say something. Jim, are you gonna say something? Yes, I would merely like to share the experience of the Rotary Club that I just came from. This is the Rotary Club of Wicomico County, also sometimes called the Lunchtime Club in Salisbury. And they have been meeting um, probably for the last three months indoors, socially distanced with masks. Uh, they've taken long tables and seated uh, one, one member at each end of, of the long tables. And uh, they've had no difficulty. So I, I, th I think all of this is uh, very, both well-intended and very appropriate and should be foremost in our minds. Um, but I also think that for those of us who are comfortable taking you know, a modicum of risk, uh, that, that the club should go ahead. I don't think that we have to all be of one mind on this. I certainly get, that's certainly the case in this club. And that's the, that's the great thing about this club. We've got 37 members with 37 points of view and I just love it. And what we'll do is just throw it out there. Those who participate uh, will and those who don't, won't. And we'll just leave it at that. Um, oh, what I'd like, oh, yeah. What, one other question. Yeah, Joy. Will, will the party be broadcast on Zoom? <laughs> uh, no, that'll probably be difficult because we're out in the park 
And, um, but if our, if some of our great minds can figure that out, uh, <laughs> we can be, be nice. <laughs> we, we can be on Zoom. I tell you, Jim, you missed a great time. Uh, we had our meeting in the park back in June and uh, it was, a, you know, we were all spread out. We had our masks on, we had a little vino and a great time was had. We even had sandwiches, didn't we? Box lunches. So it was uh, it was super. Um, I'll remind you also, we had a drawing with a number of members at that drawing, plus a bunch of other citizens of the town. And we had a big, pretty big gathering over at Strawberry Plaza. I've heard of no ill effects from that meeting. That's right. And that's where we met Jim. We met Jim at that meeting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, guys, look, um, this, this, uh, we're, we're, we're through with announcements. And what I have here are, is $40. And the $40 was, was given to me by Dr. Uh, Parker Dooley. How many know Parker Dooley? T Parker Dooley is a good friend of mine. And uh, he missed the raffle. So he said, Bill, I'm sorry I missed the raffle, but here's $40 for you guys to do some good with. So because we're celebrating Polio Day, which is this Saturday, Worldwide Polio Day is this Saturday. Um, and we're about to have happy dollars because last week and this week's happy dollars go to Polio Plus. So Diane, yeah. what are you going to do, Diane? I am going to show, since apparently we are at this point, happy dollars. Happy dollars. <laughs> so we'll kick off happy dollars by putting in $40. You hear that, Paul? Yeah, the little guy is really happy $40. about it. Okay. Uh, a guy is jumping up and down, and these had are forty dead, happy dead. dollars from from Doctor yeah, Parker dead. Dooley. <laughs> What's his name? Parker Dooley. Doc. He's a doc. He's one of you. Up. Oh, and he has the, that. Uh, yeah, uh, Bill. As the as the club foundation chair, uh, I'm going to give uh, ten dollars to to uh, Polio Plus because you know we're down. <laughs> We're this close, we're this close to eradicating polio. And part of that $10 also goes because my good friend here, uh, Bill Billings, is going to talk about uh, something. I'll introduce it later, but uh, foundation. So um, $10. Thank you. Bill, Bill Payne is uh, Dr. Dooley. Is that D O O L E Y? Exactly. Okay. Bill Murphy, I saw your hand pop up. Yeah, I've got uh, I got uh, ten happy dollars. Five of them. I uh, also want to add for Polio Plus, like Bill said, for uh, Mr. Billings being with us today. We appreciate that. So I'd like to send five to that. And uh, also, I have another five uh, in honor of the new grandson of one of our members, Walter Childs. He's uh, out in Colorado, and I meant to write it down, but I didn't. But it's about a, about a week ago, right after they got out there, they had a new uh, grandson that was born, and. Uh, everyone's doing fine, and him and Randy will be out there till probably after Christmas. So everything's great with him. So I have five happy dollars in honor of his new grandson. Thank you, Bill. Who else wants to get in on Polio Day? Jackie. Five happy dollars. Why are you happy, Jackie? GP. Uh, they don't know what GP means. General principle. General principal, Jackie is happy on general principal. <laughs> See, now I'm gonna give you all guys a little, little uh, black history here. Uh, GP is right from the hood. Um, <laughs> so write that down, you've been educated. General principal, I grew up with that in the projects on the south side of Chicago. <laughs> I took that from the military. <laughs> oh. uh, hey, Bill, I learned that in rural North Carolina when I was young. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I'm going to keep it rolling. Oh, uh, Robert, are you speaking up there, Robert? Oh yes. 
I'm giving five dollars because GP also. <laughs> <laughs> and and we want to make GP gets recorded in the minutes. <laughs> Hey, Bill, I've got five happy dollars also and to, to put towards the polio campaign. Yes. Thank you, Al. Paul raised his hand. Yeah, I have five happy dollars uh, for uh, uh, because we had, I had a wonderful trip last week camping uh, with uh, my wife, Ginger, and our granddaughter, Josie. Um, and we, we went camping in... Uh, over the western end of the state, uh, not far from Natural Bridge, and there's a safari park there called Virginia Safari Park, which is a wonderful place if you want to go and have a great time with a grandchild. Um, it, the the there's you drive your car through this area, and all sorts of llamas and deer and buffalo even and uh, weird uh, uh, breeds of cattle from all parts of the world come up to your car and they will actually stick their head in your window uh, and give you a bucket of stuff that you can feed them and they'll they'll eat the food out of your hand they're all quite well trained and uh, we just had a wonderful time there particularly our four-year-old Josie okay thank you Paul we missed you I, I tell you last week was a disaster without you but <laughs> glad to have you back um, I'm gonna keep the ball rolling um, with 20 happy dollars, that's only because I was stupid last week and I could, can't go down from last week. Um, and I probably won't be giving for a while, but I'm happy because the sunshine came out behind me and it's just a delightful day. And I'm, I'm uh, happy that, uh, I'm surrounded by so many friends electronically today. Hey, Bill, I, I got a five happy dollars here. <clears throat> I'll tell you a little story. I, last uh, Tuesday after the meeting, I went over to my grandson's house in, in Quinby, my seven-year-old, and I've taught him how to ride a two-wheeler. So we, we ride a couple of miles, two, you know, two or three miles whenever I can take him over there. But don't you know, that little kid swerved into me and both of us both of us wiped out onto the pavement i, I watched this little kid do a face plant on the pavement but oh. it, but he just missed it in other words it, it, it he didn't kiss it thank the lord god and and i tore my pants you know and i had a bloody knee and but, but you know what he did he goes, Pop, Pop, are you all right? The oh. kid didn't cry. He didn't scream. I was so proud of him. Within a minute, we were both back on our bikes and going. So that was Tuesday. Then on Saturday, I had to take care of him for about eight hours. So he came over to my house. And I thought, you know, this is a good day to teach him how to row my little rowboat. So we, so I put him in the rowboat, you know, and we go out rowing. And I'm showing him how to row the rowboat. And and he, he he's having fun. We come back to the dock. He gets on the dock. I'm like, boy, this is great. Next thing I know, I hear this big splash. <laughs> <laughs> he fell right off the dock. He fell right off the dock into the water. And, and he goes, pop, pop. You know? <laughs> I, boy, I, I hauled this little, you know, waterlogged rat out of the water, and, uh, and he was laughing. We both laughed, and, I, and his parents come over to pick him up, you know, and I had to tell him about it because his clothes were all wet. I had to, you know, give him a bath and all that. Hey, I got the, 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 the moniker now, Bad Grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Dave, hey Dave, forget about teaching them mountain climbing. <laughs> well, I'm, ha I'm happy. I'm happy the boy is still alive and well and survived. You, he, he survived his his uh, you know outings with his grandfather. <laughs> That's a great story. 
<laughs> okay, thank you, David. Uh, any other happy dollars? Yes, I have five happy dollars. Um, I I remember the before this when the beginning of the pandemic. One of my biggest concern was my daughter's school. So in the end, I realized my daughter um, was actually never a a concern. Like she just, I was amazed at how fast she adjusts to everything. She loves learning, and she took care of all her school stuff, uh, even you know doing virtually. And she get up really early, makes coffee for me, and then she get her school computer ready everything she's just amazing and I, i'm amazed by my six-year-old daughter so i'm thankful she must have good parents <laughs> oh <laughs> well I, I like to think that way thank you so much huck <laughs> well thank you mary anybody else you know, oh i'll, I'll uh, chip in five dollars i talked to my granddaughter Sunday evening and all is well with my great granddaughter who's about 10 weeks away from making her first public appearance. So mm -hmm. all is going well and uh, I'm looking forward to being a great grandpa for the first time. So, so you have 10 weeks to go there, Chuck? 10 more weeks. Okay, We're we'll keep an eye on that. Wow. She's due on December 26, but I asked her to try and speed it up maybe by one day so we all have a great Christmas. <laughs> but not for the kid <laughs> okay well look uh thank you everybody uh is there anybody else signing up here okay well i think we're gonna have a nice um polio plus um check written for these two uh tuesdays so uh thank you very much bill stram will you introduce uh bill billings sure so it gives me great honor to uh, introduce Bill. I've known Bill as long as I've been in uh, Rotary. Um, you know, Bill, Bill has a couple of monikers that uh, he's known by. Uh, one of them is his straw hat there. But he's known as the district acronym guru uh, to the point where he just couldn't stand acronyms, you know, like uh, GP, um, AWOL, uh, but anyway, so he, he even came up with a, a listing uh, and passed it out at the, at the dist for the district. Besides that, he's a member of the Paul Harris Societies. So, Bill, we appreciate that. Um, you, you're got at least uh, four here that are Paul Harris Society. And then um, <clears throat> he's... Um, He's also been the district photographer. I don't know if you still have that uh, that title, but he's been the district photographer as well. And lastly, and most importantly, he's been the uh, endowment chair for the district uh, Rotary Foundation committee for for as long as I can remember, for long years, a lot of years. So, without any further ado, I'll turn it over to Bill because he's. Okay. Oh. All right, can you can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Perfectly. Okay, wonderful. Thank thank you Bill for that introduction. I'm uh, delighted to finally be uh, able to meet with your club even if it's by Zoom. I'm going to talk about the Rotary Foundation of Rotary International. And the good thing about the Rotary Foundation is that it's doing good in the world. And I think that uh, you all have a good idea of all the things that Rotary is doing in the world. This is a uh, bridge that we uh, built in Ethiopia uh, that saved people five days walk. That's over the Blue Nile River Gorge. And area, uh, Rotary's areas of focus, we have six areas, and I think you all know those, but the big news is that they're adding a seventh, and that's the uh, supporting the environment becomes a new area of focus. So the annual gifts to the Rotary Foundation help people around the world 
uh, live better lives today. And I want to take uh, a closer look at the real funding of the Rotary Foundation. So the annual fund um, is a big part of it. That's uh, Paul Harris Fellows and uh, other uh, contributions. And then Polio Plus, which you've been talking about today. And then there's one that uh, people don't know as much about, and that's the interest going into the uh, Rotary Foundation. And that interest coming from the endowment fund. And that's what I'm excited about because I'm the district endowment fund chair. And in 1917, Arch Klump, the sixth president of Rotary said that we should accept endowments for the purpose of doing good in the world. Now this mountain is um, Mount Timpanogos in Utah. And I think it symbolizes to me uh, the power of the endowment fund because Rotary Endowment Fund, your contributions are invested in perpetuity. And that's pretty, exciting you think about it. Now, later in the program, we'll come back to Mount Timpanogos, but I wanna say something about the endowment fund. First of all, you put Rotary in your estate plan, and then you don't have to part with a penny. And it gets even better because Rotary won't spend any of the money that they receive. So the money will always be there. And a gift to Rotary's endowment fund supports life-changing programs forever. And I've got a one minute video here, if we can get it to play. Let's see, do we have, ah, wonderful. <laughs> You're a lead boy. You know what that means? We work hard and we give back. You know, someday this apple tree will be bigger than I am. We're leaving the future behind today. We'll see. Giving to Rotary's endowment ensures life-changing programs will benefit generations to come. Your legacy is Rotary's promise. So your legacy is Rotary's promise. And you can make an impact now and forever. But let's take a closer look at the endowment fund itself. This is uh, one of my photos of um, my wife's um, flower in the rain. But if you put $1,000 in your estate plan then you become a benefactor of the Rotary Foundation. Or if you put $10,000 in your estate plan, you become a bequest society member. If you put $25,000 in your estate plan, then you can name the endowment fund that it goes to. Uh, for example, I'm working with a fellow who's uh, setting up a fund in his mother's name. See, a $25,000 gift uh, can yield approximately $1,000 uh, in spendable earnings for the Rotary programs every year. Now, the big uh, milestones in the endowment fund really started in, in 2017 when the endowment fund reached a billion dollars. And now Rotary is getting really excited about the power of endowments. And the new goal is to have uh, over $2 billion by 2025. 
Now, what's cool about that is if you do some numbers, you see that if you have over 2 billion in there, the interest will yield over $100 million a year forever for doing good in the world. And that that's really cool, I think. Now in Rotary, we talk a lot about service above self, and I like to put a little different spin on it and say, all right, uh, how about service after self? So I think that really every Rotarian should consider to becoming a part of the Rotary Foundation Endowment Fund. And the easiest way to do that is to become a benefactor with $1,000 in your estate plan. But here's an interesting uh, figure that I've come up with is that in our district, 7,600, there's more than 1,700 Rotarians who are not benefactors. So that's $1.7 million uh, for doing good on, in the world that's uh, left on the table. And I, what, I look at it and I say, why isn't everyone a benefactor? And I think that part of the reason is that everybody thinks it's too complicated. There's too many uh, ins and outs of it. And on the road to becoming a benefactor, they see a lot of roadblocks and these roadblocks are not real. They really are not real because becoming a benefactor is simply making a promise to Rotary. You fill out the form, send a copy of it to, um, Rotary Foundation and you put a copy next to your will. And that's what I did. And then Rotary, when they get the note, they'll send you a benefactor ribbon. You can put that ribbon on your ro Rotary pin and really, doesn't that look cool? So when the time comes for me to go to the great Rotary meeting in the sky, my executor will go through my will and he'll see that I wanted to give a thousand dollars to the Rotary Foundation and he'll send him a check. Now, if there isn't money for that, for whatever reason, uh, Rotary does not come looking for it. They're not going to bother anybody. They just write it off. So there's no downside to becoming a benefactor to the foundation. So I'd encourage everybody to sign up to at least become a benefactor. Now to get the, 20, the 2 billion by 2025, one of the most powerful ways is uh, become a bequest society member. And what I did is um, I talked to my financial advisor. I had a $10,000 insurance policy that I was going to sign over to Rotary, but uh, my advisor came up with a special annuity. Uh, so I did it that way and put $10,000 in the annuity and the annuity, um, it, pays me $500 a year interest, which is wonderful because I use that for, uh, toward my Paul Harris Society. So there are different ways to do this. Now in my Rotary Foundation journal, I started with a Paul Harris fellow and benefactor, Paul Harris Society, and then Bequest Society. And gee, all that was over the years, I've been a Rotarian since 1976. So each time I put money into the foundation, it adds up and then I became a major donor. So I'd like to go back to Mount Timpanogos here. And here is the last uh, 800 feet up to the uh, top of the peak. And the feeling that you get when you're on the top of something like that is just absolutely awesome. It's a thrill, a deep down thrill. Now, you don't have to climb Mount Timpanogos to have that wonderful, good, deep down feeling. What you can do is you can support the endowment fund. You can get that same wonderful feeling of satisfaction and accomplishment. You can do it through your estate plan, you write a check, credit card, see your financial advisor and you can do good in the world forever. And you can have that wonderful feeling that I have when I'm on top of the mountain. The endowment fund, why not? You'll never miss it. 
you never will miss it. So does anybody have any questions? Looks like you have a perfect presentation there, Bill. There got to, there has to be a question for Bill. Oh, there we go. Jim, uh, Jackie's got a question now. We'll let her go before you, Jim. Okay. I'll just come closer so he can hear me. I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but Bill and I just completed the RLI course class. Yeah. And um, the uh, we had a person from the foundation speak to us. And there was one thing that I did not get from her. And this presentation is very timely because I wondered who managed the endowment fund and how much interest they were earning on it. And this answers my question completely. So I appreciate having seen this. So that's not a question. No, it's a comment. It's, it's a compliment, Bill. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, okay, Jim, you had a question. When the when Rotary International projected the growth of this uh, endowment and set a goal of doubling it, um, were they counting on using an all external, all outside donations to make this grow, or are they rolling over this in, this interest? They have a, a very um, intricate plan for managing the money long term, and that includes growing it through some of the interest, but uh, most of it coming from outside. They 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 want to they want to have the balance, and uh, to me, backing up a little, one of the best things is is that. Uh, when we had the big financial crash, uh, it didn't really uh, wipe out the, uh, the endowment fund. They had a conservative uh, in, uh, investments. And so I, th I think that they're doing a really good job. But, but to answer your question, yes, there's a blend. Thank you. So, so Bill, Bill Strang here. I just want to know that the Rotary Club of Cape Charles has four benefactors. That means there's 33 that are not. Okay. Thank oh, you. Yeah. Any other questions for Bill? Well, Bill, thank you for coming. Although we planned, uh, I, I'd say Bill and I have been talking for like two years. Two years yeah. <laughs> for him to come to the Eastern shore and visit with us in person. We try to uh, arrange that he could visit more than one club on the Eastern shore. It just never worked out and I'm sorry it didn't Bill, but after this blows over, we're gonna have you back and, um, and maybe we'll, we'll have some good to share with you in terms of us making progress with regard to the endowment. Paul, you have a comment. I do, and it, this is just a comment also, rather than a question. Uh, thank you for presenting this, and it, it, it I, I'm, I'm a benefactor, and it was just nothing to it. You know, you write a little note, and you put it with your papers, and your safety deposit box, and it's done. And it's always mystified me why more Rotarians don't do it. Like you say, you never miss a thousand dollars, and neither will uh, your benefactors. Um, and uh, so it's so easy. So the only thing you can make do to make it easier is tell us how everybody can get this little card to fill out. I send a copy of it to uh, Bill. So um, uh, he should have that in his email. And uh, Bill Stram, you probably have a in, copy. In the, uh, newsletter. Yeah. 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 We'll get the ball rolling. I'll, I'll, you know, just have a little discussion here. I, I never became a benefactor because I was kind of nervous about talking to Jackie about it. And um, now that we've ja got Jackie on board, um, it'll be a little easier. I think that's the case. You know, you don't do something like this if you're in a relationship uh, without checking with the other partner. 
and um, you know maybe we have to step up to that, and then then we go ahead. But we'll make this part of our our uh, newsletter. We'll put the um, the the form in our newsletter, and maybe we get a little more uh, traction in Cape Charles, Bill. So thanks again for coming to see us and uh, sharing with us the endowment story. And we look forward to uh, you know getting together in the future in person. All right, is there anything else for the good of Rotary that uh, someone would like to say? In that case, Diane. Diane. <laughs> <laughs> With regard to what we think, say, and do, one, is it the truth? Two, is it fair to all concerned? Four, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Four, will it be beneficial to all concerned? And if Stanley was here, he would tell us we would have fun. See you, see everybody next week. Hey, Paul. Bye. Paul, could you hold on? Yeah. Hang out for a minute. Uh, oh, no, I just, I, I want to give you an envelope. Uh, you just want me to drop it by, I didn't want to be, <laughs> drop it by your house. Could sure. You, okay. All right. Bye-bye. All right.